indeed a very special day, and I'm honored to be here with all of you. Graduates, as you reflect on your time at Anderson, you've undoubtedly noticed that the business world loves acronyms. In your classes, you've encountered scores of them. ROIC, IRR, even BATNA. And despite regular advice that you've received that acronyms create more confusion than they resolve, I understand that you've even adopted a few of your own. So in that spirit, I'd like to violate this council one last time and talk to you today about an acronym that you haven't heard of, IQTR. That's right, IQTR. It stands for infinite quality time remaining. It's this idea that you can wait until later that you can wait for some magical point in the distant future where you'll make and take the time to do what really matters to you. It's an especially appealing concept on a day like today, when you're all looking forward with well-justified optimism to a future that seems limitless, even timeless. The trouble is, IQTR is a trap. And it's a trap that I've fallen for a few times myself in my life. And it's a trap that can rob you of the kind of meaningful careers or even meaningful lives that we're all capable of enjoying. He not only in reference to the legendary UCLA basketball coach John Wooden, he also once said that if you don't have the time to do it right, when are you going to have the time to do it over? So if you want to have a gratifying, fulfilling career, then how do you do it right in real time? As the game clock ticks down, a clock, by the way, that you can't see, how do you make the most of the time that you have? I would suggest three steps for you to consider. At first, work on things that really matter to you. Follow your passion. If you take a job just for the money or for the prestige, watch out. That satisfaction won't last. You know, I honestly don't remember who spoke at my business school commencement almost <clears throat> well, a few years ago, which, as you might imagine, uh, gave me some pause as I prepared my talk for today. But I do remember one, one big piece of advice from business school which was to work on those ideas or technologies that had the power to change the world, to disrupt in a positive way every aspect of our lives. And at the time, long before the internet, search engines, social media, I thought I'd be lucky to see one or two of these truly game-changing technologies during the course of my career. Boy, was I wrong. Technologies have changed and continue to change virtually every aspect of every industry. If I look just at the world around Amgen, I see at least two enormous revolutions unfolding. One, in our understanding of human genetics, and the other, in the area of immuno-oncology, which is a field that we and others are harnessing to treat cancer. And it's not just biology. What strikes me today as I look across the business landscape is that exciting revolutions are happening everywhere. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. Think of the enormous opportunities that will arise from these in the coming years. Or autonomous vehicles, or gains in renewable energy, these incredible technological advances, and so many others, mean that the opportunities for you to make an impact on the world are greater than they've ever been. But you have to seize those opportunities. You have to decide what matters to you, what motivates you, what inspires you. And if you don't yet know, you need to know soon. Graduating 
as you are from one of the leading schools in the world, you're in the enviable position of being able to do almost anything you want to do. So what do you really want? What are you really interested in? You need to know. And the sooner you know the answer to that question, the better. Don't just follow the herd. Don't fall for the IQTR trap. Dean Olean mentioned that I was an investment banker for the first 20 years of my career where my focus was on healthcare. Now, I enjoyed banking, I enjoyed my time as a banker, but eventually I felt there was something missing. I just didn't feel all in as a banker. So when I had the opportunity to join Amgen in 2006, I jumped at the opportunity with both feet. As the world's leading biotechnology company, Amgen's mission to serve patients suffering from serious illness spoke to me on a deeply personal level. It conveyed a sense of urgency that resonated with me, a sense that time really mattered. Think about what time means for someone with cancer, where survival is often measured in months, not years. Or to an Alzheimer's patient who loses that little bit of herself with every passing day. Believe me, these patients and their families can hear that tick, tick, tick of time loud and clear. They understand so clearly that there's no such thing as infinite quality time remaining. Amgen's mission still speaks to me today, just as it did when I joined some 10 years ago. And I'm not here to suggest that all of you come to work for Amgen, though I'm particularly pleased that more than 100 Anderson grads already have, but I am here to tell you that you'll feel more than fulfilled, more than fulfilled in your career if it aligns with your passions, and especially if it's in a business that's trying to make a difference in the world. So that's step one. Find a company, and if it doesn't exist, create a company that is looking to do big things, things that excite you and give you a chance to do work that really matters. Step two. Step two is about developing yourself so that you can reach your full career potential as quickly as possible. You're leaving Anderson Sharp, able to break down a business problem as well as anyone in the land. The challenge is not to let your ax grow dull as you chop through the wood of your career. You own that. It's critical that you take charge of your own development path. Don't expect someone else to do it for you. It's up to you to manage your career and do it with a healthy sense of restlessness. When I left Morgan Stanley to join Amgen, I actually took a step backwards in traditional terms, giving up a high-profile role in banking for a low-profile role in biotechnology. I had been in finance my whole career, but my first job at Amgen was in the club company's global supply chain which required a completely different set of skills from those that I had developed over the prior 20 years. I was happy to take the risk because I was excited about what Amgen was doing and its mission. And I was fortunate to have mentors at Amgen who were prepared to take a chance on me. When I look back, I'm amazed how few people are willing to take a step back in their career to then jump ahead. My advice, don't be afraid. Take that chance. Don't be complacent. Be inspired. I think it's healthy to regularly ask yourself a few questions about your career. Ask yourself, am I enjoying what am I doing? Does my work matter? Do I respect the values of the company that I'm working for and the people that I'm working with? Am I growing in my role? Or am I flattening out and getting too comfortable? If you don't like your answers, it's probably time or even past time for you to do something different. So that's step two. Invest in the effort and have the discipline to actively manage your own career. Now step three is where things get really interesting. 
Step three is about bringing others along, helping them experience the same kind of commitment you feel to the mission of your company. It's about giving people a chance to achieve their full potential through their own contributions. And as the clock keeps ticking, you want to be in this phase of your career for as long as possible. Amgen was founded in 1980 when a team of just three people formed the, the enterprise. And over time, some 50,000 people have worked for Amgen around the world. And I'll bet if you ask them, they would all tell you that our mission is clear. It's to serve patients suffering from serious illness. That's the glue that binds Amgen together as a company. And at the end of the day, it's a leader's job to get an organization aligned and inspired to achieve something that's bigger than any of us as individuals. In step three, you realize that it's pretty hard to change the world all by yourself, no matter how hardworking, how passionate, how talented you may be. You realize that the more powerful route, the faster route, and the route which is also by far much more fun and rewarding, is to change the world with others at your side. Let me sum up these three steps with a, a quick story. Just before I became CEO of Amgen in 2012, I received an email from the parents of a 10-year-old girl. She was suffering from a deadly form of cancer. Her parents had scoured the world looking for an answer there were no approved therapies that could give them what they needed. They were convinced their only hope was an experimental drug that Amgen was studying. The only problem was we were studying it in adults and not yet in children. Knowing time wasn't on their side, they challenged us to make an exception and make it fast. So we did. On the very day I became CEO, I heard again from the little girl's parents. They wrote to say she was responding well to the drug and they believed it would save her life. Now this is the part of the story where I wish with all my heart that I could point to a young girl in the audience and say, there she is. Isn't it wonderful? She was cured. But that's not how this story ends. The drug has worked for many patients but unfortunately, not for all. And in the end, it didn't work for this child. You all will have many, many successes in your careers, but you will face failures too, in your professional and in your personal lives. You'll celebrate your successes, and I would encourage you to embrace your failures as well and to learn from them. Failure can be painful, even heartbreaking, but also motivating. You know, I kept the emails from that family taped to a drawer in my desk for the past five years. And these notes serve as a relentless reminder to me that our work is not done, that we must do more, that our next solutions must be better than our last. Graduates, whatever you choose to do next, do it with your head and your heart. Do it with both. The time for you to make a difference in the world is now, right now. There's no time to waste. Don't ever, ever let yourself fall into the trap of infinite quality time remaining. Don't let yourself believe you can do it later. It's a lie. There are big, fun, exciting, complex challenges out there waiting just for you, and the clock is ticking. So what are you waiting for? Get up here, get your diplomas, get out there and do something special, and I can't wait to see what all of you accomplish. Thank you.